we move on into a related topic, which is uh, climate change. Uh, what is it? What is climate change? Eh? And what is its impact on agriculture? So I hope that you will be able, at the end of this, you will be able to understand what is climate change, what causes it, and what is its impact on agriculture. Eh? Now, um, I'd like to give this example, this picture. Uh, this is in Fahrenheit. Eh? Um, outside is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the car, it climbs up eh, very quickly from 80 to, from 80, you can see to 99 Fahrenheit, 109, 114, 118, 120, and 120, all within 60 minutes. Eh? Or in degrees Celsius, it climbs from 27 degrees Celsius to 51 degrees Celsius in just one hour. So, as you know, if you park your car under the hot sun, the heat is trapped in. Uh, this is a very good analogy of uh, what global warming is, eh? uh, where heat is able to enter the car, but yet unable to come out and because the heat is trapped uh, the car becomes very hot very quickly as you can see almost a double in temperature within just one hour and this is again this is analogy of uh, greenhouse effect or global warming now how does global warming occur is because of the greenhouse effect eh? is because heat from the Sun is able to enter to penetrate the atmosphere reaching the surface but when it wants to come out, it's trapped. The greenhouse gases which, which lie in the atmosphere, they trap the heat. They allow the heat to go in, but they don't allow the heat to come out. Just like the car. It allows the heat to go into the car, but it traps the heat inside the car. So likewise, greenhouse warming uh, or global warming is the same thing, it, the same principle. Heat goes in, but it's unable to come out because of the greenhouse gas. Eh? Uh, greenhouse gas is transparent to heat, but opaque when it wants to come out. Uh, greenhouse gases, there are many types of greenhouse gases. The, the main ones are the carbon dioxide, CO2, the methane, CH4, nitrous oxide, the N2O, the ozone, even the ozone, O3, yeah, not O2, eh? O2 is oxygen, O3, ozone, and even water is a greenhouse gas. Eh? Any gas with three or more atoms are greenhouse gases. Eh? So nitrogen and oxygen, they are not greenhouse gases because they only contain, they only have two atoms, eh? like the others, carbon dioxide, CH4, and so on, they have three or more. So greenhouse gas like carbon dioxide and ozone are natural uh, gases eh? uh, and essential to life on Earth. So don't, don't mistake that uh, greenhouse gases are bad. Eh? Greenhouse gases are good. The problem, uh, the problem is, is too much of the greenhouse gases. Eh? Because greenhouse gas, they help the Earth to keep warm. Eh? Because remember, the heat goes in and traps it, right? So if you don't have any greenhouse gas, heat goes in, heat comes out, there's no net warming. So the Earth becomes very cold. So uh, it is uh, it's believed that without any greenhouse gases, the Earth will actually be minus 18 degrees Celsius, the average temperature, minus. So it's very cold. Eh? But with the greenhouse gases, the average Earth temperature is 15 degrees Celsius and essential for life and it helps water to remain as a liquid form, not gas or, or even ice form, eh? which, is not, uh, you, which is not essential for life. Water must exist as a liquid form. So, I like to show this picture. It's uh, taken from France. Eh? So global warming is a bit like uh, Joey here, eh? who wears too much layers of clothes. Eh? Uh, clothes is needed, yes. It keep, helps to keep us warm. But the problem with global warming today is there's too much greenhouse gases being emitted and they stay in the atmosphere. It is like us wearing too many layers of clothes, becoming too hot. And uh, you try wearing this amount of clothes and I think that uh, even your sweat cannot escape and you'll fall sick. So this again is a good analogy of global warming. Uh, greenhouse gases are good, it's just too much of it, so it is like wearing too many layers of clothes. Now, um, greenhouse gases from agriculture sector specifically. Uh, agriculture is one of the major source of greenhouse gas emissions. Most of our greenhouse gases come from uh, nitrogen-based fertilizers. As you know, uh, nitrogen is one of the main nutrients in agriculture. So uh, lots of application of nitrogen. Unfortunately, nitrogen-based fertilizer, they also produce nitrous oxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Uh, enteric fermentation is from livestock fatulence. 
in the form of methane, not carbon dioxide or um, or nitrous oxide, but it's in the form of methane. So one third of uh, greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture is from our fertilizer. Another third is from our livestock, like cattle, goats, sheep, and about 10%, 12% uh, more specifically, is from rice, uh, flooded rice, which emits methane, again, a greenhouse gas. Another 11%, uh, biomass burning, and the last, uh, manure handling. So these are the sources of greenhouse gases. And this is a chart showing the uh, correlation the very close relationship between carbon dioxide, the green line, as you can see, the green line, and the temperature, the bar charts. Eh? And you can see when carbon dioxide goes up, the, uh, the temperature also goes up. Eh? Again, it shows that a close relationship. You may remember, CO2 is a, global, is a greenhouse gas, causes global warming. So when you, when you have too much greenhouse gas, like CO2 into the atmosphere, the temperature will rise in tandem. Eh? And this, this is a very uh, well-known chart that shows the very close relationship between carbon dioxide increasing and temperature increasing. It's like following carbon dioxide. Uh, the CO2 levels during the start of the industrialization period, 1750, is about 270 uh, parts per million. But today, it's about 389, approaching, unfortunately, approaching 400 parts per million. Uh, the carbon dioxide increases about 1.7 parts per million per year. And uh, shockingly, today's uh, CO2 levels is the highest in the last 400,000 years eh, based on ice core studies. So what you what you're experiencing today uh, is very high compared to the last 400,000 years ago. Eh. Since 1865, the global earth temperature has increased by one degree Celsius in the last 1,000, in the past 1,000 years. Eh. Uh, but please remember, plants need carbon dioxide to survive and grow. Uh, photosynthesis is a process whereby plants make their own food, get to get their own energy, they require carbon dioxide to survive. Eh? So when, it, when carbon dioxide increases, they will result in a higher growth rate and higher crop yield. Eh?